All right, we're up and running. First uh, Planet Cassandra interview on here. I'm Garrig. I'm part of the community team here at Datastax. And with me today, I have Samuel with Rackspace. Thanks for joining us, Samuel. Glad to be here. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. We love having you. Um, so just to get started, why don't you run through a little bit about what you do at Rackspace and what Rackspace does? Sure. Uh, so I'm Samuel Toriel, uh, software developer at Rackspace. I work on the mycloud.rackspace.com, which is the cloud control panel. Uh, Rackspace itself is a leader in uh, hybrid cloud and founder of OpenStack, uh, an open source operating system for the cloud. Uh, we're a global company with nine data centers uh, around the world, uh, including the US, London, Hong Kong, and Sydney. Awesome, awesome. That's great. Uh, so, so we're talking about MyCloud today. Could you just give us a quick rundown of you know, what that is and where we might see Cassandra there? Sure. So uh, MyCloud is basically just the portal for uh, working with servers, load balancers, uh, editing your DNS entries, uh, anything you would use on public cloud. Um, let me just share my screen real quick. Cool, thanks. Uh, and so here, this is the, the login page for my cloud. Go ahead and go in. And I have a couple of ex example servers set up. Um, this is what you would see when you log in. List of servers. Uh, you can see they're all active right now. Uh, monitoring would go on the right-hand side here. Um, so, for example, I have this Web NO2 node that's sitting. It's a two gigabyte performance server. Uh, you can see there's monitoring agents hooked up to it, so you can see what's going on with the server right now. Uh, you have access to making uh, different networks, private networks. Uh, you can build images from the server, and there's monitoring data that gets set up for it as well. Um, from this interface, you can also uh, add SSH keys, attach block storage, uh, do deployments. Actually, we have a Cassandra 207 deployment that you can do if you'd like. <laughs> Very cool. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, we have load balancers. Um, this you would hook up like web nodes or other uh, servers that you'd like to, to go with them. Uh, we have files, uh, DNS entries, uh, and you also have user management. Uh, you could do a full role-based access control. Uh, so I could have several sub-users under this one account uh, and be able to log in as them and uh, those sub-users could have specific permissions to on whether or not what products they can access. Uh, so that's just the interface for basically interacting with uh, the public cloud. Cool, and so that's all you know, consumer-facing stuff? Yes, this is all consumer-facing. Um, this is, if you sign up for a Rackspace cloud account uh, today, this is what you would see when you first log in. Cool, cool. And so before you, know, you guys made it to Cassandra, what were you running on before? Uh, so before we were using uh, a MySQL master, uh, we were a single region uh, 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 application, mm -hmm. and basically we had uh, regional slaves uh, for accessing uh, basically read slaves. Um, so that's what we're we had before. Gotcha. Okay, great. And so, what what made you make the jump? Was it from the business side of things? Was it engineering demanded? So it was a little bit of both. Uh, from the business perspective, uh, customers wanted to. Uh, Basically, they look at the control panel whenever there's issues with their servers. Mm -hmm. If uh, a data center went down, uh, then the control panel has to still be up for them uh, to be able to access to see why uh, their server might be down um, or to be able to uh, add support tickets. Um, from an engineering perspective, our project had grown from a, a single region to a multi-region application. So uh, we were our data store was kind of lagging behind, and we needed to have something that was updated. We mm -hmm. only had one. Uh, we had a MySQL master in one region. Uh, and we had like automated scripts to like kind of switch between uh, MySQL masters if like our master went down, but it would incur downtime uh, to to make that happen. So very cool. And did you consider any other NoSQL options with this, or what, what based it on Cassandra? Uh, so there were a couple factors that played into this. A uh, big one was DynamoDB. Uh, we knew we wanted to be using DynamoDB uh, based on uh, the the way queries worked and uh, performance. Um, we looked at a couple different solutions uh, that use Dynamo. Uh, Cassandra seemed like the most mature to us. Um, we knew it had a, an active development community uh, and a whole bunch of different support channels. Uh, there were two versions of Cassandra that we were looking at, uh, 1.2x and 2.0x. Uh, we actually ended up deciding on using the 2.0x series, even though uh, it was still in beta. Drivers were considered not production ready. Uh, but we still went this route because we knew we wanted to be on the latest uh, and up to date. We didn't want to do like a migration from 1.2x to 2.0x. Sure, um, sure. 
And uh, the reason we chose this was mainly due to the, due the support from Datastax and the community. We got help with uh, when implementing this. Um, uh, Rackspace also has other teams using Cassandra in production. Uh, however, most of them are using the 1.2x series. Um, so we had help on that avenue as well. Very cool, very cool. And so was this your first time kind of getting up and running with Cassandra? Yeah, this was definitely uh, my first time working with Cassandra. Nice. And how, how did you find that? Uh, confusing at first. Uh, you definitely have to think a little bit differently um, at, in terms of, uh, you know, working with tables. Uh, so I came mostly from a MySQL relational database background. Um, and you can't really think in the same way uh, of, of that as you can with, uh, with Cassandra. So especially since our application uh, was more of a web application than like a, a stream uh, handling applica application. So. Very cool. And so can you, can you walk us through a little bit more about your deployment and the exact details of your Cassandra use? Yeah, so um, right now we're currently running uh, Cassandra 207 uh, with virtual nodes. Uh, our web application connects to it using the Python driver, which is at 1.1.1. Uh, we use it as our primary data store. Uh, we run it in three different data centers um, at five nodes per data center with a replication factor of three. Uh, so this means we have 15 nodes total, uh, and this is just for our production environment. Uh, we have a similar architecture for all of our lower environments as well for testing. Um, so basically, we replicated the 15 node architecture for our pre-prod staging and test environments. Um, and for this, uh, this architecture, they also do cross data center replication. So this makes it a, a global data store for us. Uh, we can switch one traffic from one data center to another, and we won't have any data loss for customers or errors. Um, there's no downtime incurred uh, for them. Uh, this also led to performance improvements uh, as queries are performed uh, at local quorum for each data, set, each data center. Uh, it basically, they are just talking, the web application just talks to its regional uh, Cassandra cluster uh, instead of trying to reach out. But we can switch to any uh, Cassandra data center, uh, or we can switch our application to any data center, and it would still have the same uh, the same uh, information available to them. So that sounds great. And so, from uh, end user perspective, what have kind of the benefits of making the jump to Cassandra been? Uh, so for the end user, the control panel is available regardless of any single data center uh, having issues. Um, we eliminated a single point of failure, which could have caused errors for users uh, and downtime if our MySQL master went down. Um, performance increases for our regional customers like Sydney. Uh, all data is replicated to every data center, so like I said earlier, uh, they'll see less uh, uh, slowness uh, when they log into the control panel. Uh, we also no longer care if uh, one of our data store nodes go down. Uh, we can easily upgrade uh, the version that they're on. Uh, we can change any configuration options uh, without causing downtime. So, like a node goes down, you know, we can switch things out. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it makes it easy for us, basically, as an op as an operations team. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and so, you know, the last thing I think I just have is: there, do you have any advice for those kind of just getting started with Cassandra? Uh, yeah. So, uh, really, the I have like a couple things here, but uh, use the community mailing list or IRC channels on Freenode. Uh, uh, pound Cassandra and pound Datastax drivers. Uh, this is probably where we got the most of the bulk of our information and help from. Uh, ask questions, listen to answers. Idling in those channels was super, super helpful. Um, number two, stay up to date on bug reports uh, with Cassandra by reading the issue tracker. Uh, when we first started, we didn't uh, look at the issue tracker so much, uh, and we would run into issues and we'd do all this investigation. When all we had to do was like look at the issue tracker, see someone had reported it already, it was being worked on, and it was going to be fixed in the next release. So, gotcha, uh, that's great. the the third thing, uh, your relational schema will not work in Cassandra. Uh, we we found that most of uh, what we had to do with Cassandra was we had to compose our tables per query. Um, so it just for performance reasons, uh, it was much easier to work like that. Gotcha. Um, also, like huge shout out to uh, Tyler Hobbs. Uh, he was super helpful in uh, getting the Datastax Python driver working for us. Uh, if you want, you can follow him on Twitter. Uh, super big help. There we go. Awesome. Well, that's great, man. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Samuel. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we cut off here? Uh, yeah, I actually have a couple quotes uh, from my, my team members um, on like how it was for their first time uh, using Cassandra. Um, I'll probably just read those off. Uh, so 
Alex Mang, he said, uh, Cassandra has a bit of a learning curve, especially for someone coming from a relational database background. Uh, like with any distributed system, there are lots of concepts to wrap your head around. With Cassandra, there's a wealth of information online, a great community to jump into. Uh, our team read documentation, watched tech talks, chatted in IRC while ramping up on uh, our understanding. We were able to go from let's understand Cassandra to a 15 node production cluster in just a matter of a few months. Uh, and that was actually with our moving our whole application to it uh, and uh, removing a single point of failure from our system. Uh, Andrew Mussey uh, mentioned, you know, coming from a background of mostly relational databases, uh, it was an interesting change. There was definitely a learning curve understanding structure and day-to-day -day operation, uh, but the willingness of the Cassandra community to collaborate and share knowledge always made it feel like there was something uh, we, could go to, we can go for uh, help. Uh, Matt Green, uh, our Linux engineer, said, uh, exciting and challenging. Uh, no one on the team had any deep experience using Cassandra. We were all learning it together. Uh, there were a lot of discussions and experimentation at the beginning of our project. Um, so really, I think the, the community is like what helped us uh, get to where we were with Cassandra. That's awesome. We love hearing that. And so I, I actually think I saw in the Twitterverse that you guys had some trophies for this. Is that yeah. right? You want to yeah, show off um, there a bit? Yeah, so uh, we at, we won the uh, impact of the month for uh, basically getting Cassandra uh, in production and our web application uh, using it and killing MySQL, actually deleting our database nodes for those uh, pretty recently. So That's great. So I think the moral of the story is switch to Cassandra and you get some awards, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that's how it works. <laughs> all right. Well, great. I think that's all we have today. Uh, anything else you want to throw in there? No, I think that's all I got. All right. Well, thanks, Samuel. It's been great. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Thanks.